March 2nd, 2023. This is the 2000 tick chart from the S&P 500 E-mini futures on the Thinkorswim platform. You don't have to watch the entire video. You could probably go down to the descriptions at the bottom where I've timestamped all my trades as well as setups that I saw. So this is what happened in the market today. It was kind of a slow grind, slow, kind of a slow orderly rally that went from like the bottom right, bottom left to the top right. This is how I have my charts out today. I took a total of eight trades today and I only got three winners and I had five losers. So I took some trades that were questionable and I'll go through them shortly. Just kind of point out a few things about the chart. Now it was a little bit kind of choppy. It was a several consolidation ranges that you can see. But overall, I eventually found this giant trend channel going up. And then later extended the trend channel up to this line, which seemed to work. And then later a third trend channel that kind of went up that way. And for the most part, it looked like the day was going to stay within the range established in the pre-market and toward probably the last hour and a half, it broke out and then it kind of went into this trading range. But even then on the beginning of the day, I kind of was trading in this big range. So let's get into the trades. This is the pre-market. I established the high and the low. And you see it sold off, kind of chopped around, came back up, chopped back down. These, this trading range, this trend line, excuse me, this trend channel was not established yet. So I drew those in later. There's a big, big, big congestion consolidation zone. So I didn't really see any good trades or any good clean setups. I do see the first potential possible trade here. So uh, just a reference point, this orange dotted line here as well as this dotted line up here. This is the 200 simple moving average, and this is the 100 simple moving average on the daily chart. So they're already coming close together, and whenever that happens, even if you're not taking them into account, a lot of other traders are. So when it starts to break below, or when you see these two lines coming together, usually if it's coming from above, it might act as some kind of resistance point so even if you're not taking into account, you just, you, I just keep it in the back of my mind that whenever it hits these points from the top or the bottom, there could be some kind of reaction. So at the moment, when this trade was happening or when this price action was happening, it was below the 100 simple moving average. So I saw a new high, first entry long, a potential second entry long here. It's a pretty decent signal bar, but I wasn't sure if this is actually the bottom of the trading range at this point. And as you can see, the trade would have worked, but you don't know it at the time because the trading range bottom could actually have been up here and this could have been an overshoot. Later, I did drag it down to here or it could have been even further down. Now, at this point, I also didn't have this trend channel to work off of, but it was like the first confirmation here. So that was just as passed. I passed on that trade. Prices continue moving. It's just chopping like crazy. There's all kinds of first and second entries here but they're not high probability because you can count as a new high first entry, second entry here, then it fails. So you'd be jumping back and forth above and below the EMA. So that doesn't really, you know, invite any good ideas for trades. Comes back down, I have consolidation area up here, but I didn't see any good trades. I also saw a potential measured move. So I drew one here and I picked the obvious bottom, which is here and placed the second measured move just to see where it could possibly have a reaction or a turn. So prices continue moving up. This is where I do see a potential second entry short. So I have this trend channel going up. There's a new low. On my chart, I don't see a first break until I get up to here. And this is the first entry low once it breaks, first entry short once it breaks below this candle, and reverses, and this is a potential second entry short. But I didn't take this trade, even though the candle is pretty small, there's some room to the EMA, mainly because it is counter trend. So it would have worked. And at this point, I do draw the bottom of this trend line here. And I couldn't quite determine if it would go up here or would it be somewhere a little bit tighter. So I just mainly had this support line down here at the time. I didn't have these two really firmly anywhere. But when this reversed down, I thought, okay, maybe, maybe this is the first touch. And this could have just been a spike. And it goes into this channel here. But then we'll later find out that this bigger channel comes into play. However, you had to wait pretty much several hours later to have this line established 
as well as confirmed. So it doesn't do you any good when you draw it that early. So then I do have my first trade here because I had a first second entry short as a break of this guy I made attempt to push up once and then it came came down and I thought at the time that this was a lower high. So <clears throat> excuse me. Lower high ends up, it fails on me because I take the entry here. And I took this lower high just because it was too early. I didn't wait for the trigger bar to close. And in hindsight, the trend, trading range, although it wasn't established yet, I should have just been more careful because this is also a counter trend trade. So it's similar to just me thinking I found the top and I'm jumping in. But there's no clear indication that that is the top and the prices are going to reverse. So it was definitely risky. You could say there's potentially a support, excuse me, resistance line here, but this is sort of too far from it to try to take short. So that was my first trade, and it turned out to be a red trade. Prices continue moving, chops. So in the moment, now you could tell between this trade and this trade is only about, let's see, about six or through four minutes apart from uh, 707 to 711. So I was probably a little emotional, but I was thinking, okay, well, this trend line, this trading range might be established. A little early to say, but I saw a new low, first entry short, it's kind of a weak first entry short, second entry short. And as it comes up, I also saw, okay, this might be a new high, first entry long, second entry long. And for whatever reason, it could have been a second entry short failure or a first entry, second entry long failure. I decided to jump on the short bandwagon and take a short right here. It comes up, my stop is up above this guy, so I'm still surviving. And then right here, it takes me out. Actually, it took me out on this candle. And that was also, in hindsight, a pretty foolish trade to have taken. Because if you look here, the signal bar, although it looks decent, the context isn't clear. So close above the EMA. This in any other situation might be a decent signal bar, but in this is kind of in a horizontal sideways trading range. So it was kind of foolish for me to just take this as well as it being counter trend. I should have just had this red trade and then just left it alone. So it ends up being my second trade, my second red trade of the day. Prices continue moving breaks down, breaks below the trading range. Now when it touches here, it's giving me more confidence that this trading, this support line is legitimate. I still am unsure of if this is the top of the trading range or if this is the top of the trading range. So I don't have that drawn, but it doesn't come into play yet. And it's not as important at this point. So prices continue to move. I'm just kind of sitting, waiting, feeling stupid for taking two bad trades. I did see this potential first entry short, second entry short, but I also knew better because although this is a trading channel that I drew, I just said, you know, I need something a little clear because these are big pushes up to try to take a short is seems a little foolish because it might, yes, it might come up at here, which it did, it might come back down. So I wasn't in the proper mindset to take any potential trade there. So now when this comes up and comes back down, I felt that this trading channel top was confirmed. Touch once, touch twice. Now, you know, I touched a third time to really confirm it, but I was at believing that this is something I could work off of to trade around. So uh, this top one doesn't come into play late, until later, but at least I'm working with this giant trading channel going up. And I felt, okay, it seems pretty good, pretty firm. And this is where I take my third trade. So this is a little sketchy, but this is what I saw. I saw a New high, first entry long, and then a second entry long. Now, this could have actually just been one big grouping. You could have just said this is one leg down. So I was a little bit looking too closely into the weeds when I should have just taken a step back and looked at the larger context. However, when this is forming, I think, okay, this is either going to be a second entry long or a failed second entry long. And I decided it's going to be a failed second entry long. I took an entry here, and I was lucky enough to get my profit out but then it comes back and stops out my runner so it's a small little profit not enough to cover these two losses but considering that this is actually not the best entry it's pretty aggressive because the signal bar which would be 
Well, if you're looking at second entry long, it'd be this one. But if I'm looking at failed second entry long, it would pretty much be when this one broke below right here. Now, this is, a, I guess, what I would call the bar that I'd be watching. And in hindsight, this isn't the best clean setup. And I should have just left it alone. And especially in consideration of uh, these, all three of these trades are counter trend. And this one just happened to work out. There's no indications that it should have worked out. And I was just lucky to take that trade and have this green. So it's kind of a lesson learned, just to be a little more patient, because I certainly ran into a lot of impatience yesterday. <clears throat> and I think it was a little bit of carryover from today. So that was the third trade. So I had two reds and finally a green, a modest green goes back up. It doesn't quite touch the top, which is fine. It keeps going. And then I see another trade here. Now, as you can tell today, I'm just looking too closely into the weeds. I'm looking and playing in the congestion, which is always a bad idea. I saw this new low here, first entry short, potential second entry short there. <clears throat> and so when there's a second entry short fails, I take an entry up here. Now, what happened was This trade actually turned out to be, it looks like it's a decent trade, right? But actually when I took the entry, it was too late. I took it above here at 39.52.50, which is right here. And I took a long, it shot up. I didn't get out in time. Comes back, I'm waiting. I'm looking for a bigger move on the entry long, but I'm going with trend at least. But the problem is, it's going to touch, it's touching or coming up against the top of this trading range. So taking a long here inherently is already risky. On top of that, instead of taking my usual small core profit just to get out, I said, I'm gonna take a bigger profit. I think it's a bigger move, but there's no reason to think that at that time. And I wasn't thinking rationally. And I had my stop way down here. And so seeing this happen, I eventually get stopped out way down here. So it was a winning trade potentially turns into a losing trade. So there's no reason for me to have gotten red on this trade when the market was definitely offering a green had I just kind of followed the rules, but I got greedy thinking I could, this one trade could help wipe out the two losses here. So it's like red, red, green, red. So it's already four trades in and three of them I've lost now, which is like, you know, I'm not on the right side because these two shouldn't have happened The counter trend. This one is also counter trend. I was just lucky. So in all things considered, there's probably should have been four red trades. I do see like a potential second entry long visually. If you count this as like one leg, one leg down, comes up first entry long, then second entry long, and then a failure. But you'd have to discount these little spike ups. And I just kind of noticed that, but definitely don't, don't take a trade because I just felt I wasn't on the right side today. Prices continue moving down. And it goes into its trading range, chops back and forth. I do see a fail breakout triple test, one, two, three. And it comes down as fail breakout because it came out and came back up. Now, at the time, I wasn't sure if this, so I already had, had I drawn this initially, it would have been perfect. But I also had at one time thinking it might actually fit better this way. So, Let's see, right there. When I had it like that, as you can see, it touches once, touches twice, and it didn't quite touch here. So I saw this trade happening. And I wasn't sure if it was this one or the other one. And so I just kind of left that trade alone. But it turns out it would have been a fantastic trade to have taken because it's a part of this larger trading range. At least if I didn't have this established up here, I know it's a triple test. There's a very good signal bar. And it would have been a pretty profitable trade just waiting and then taking it even at the high of this guy. But unfortunately, I think just too many mistakes definitely affected my thinking. And so unfortunately, it was a good trade. It was considered two key entry points, the bottom of this guy as well as the bottom of this guy. There was enough room to the EMA, enough room to the other side. The prices continue moving. <clears throat> this is another trade that I take. I saw the fall, fail breakout here, and this one actually was, I like this trade because what I saw was, okay, new high, 
it's coming down in a very orderly fashion. <clears throat> it doesn't create a second entry per se, but it had a pretty strong showing that this bottom of this trading range was pretty good. Also, this was yesterday's low. Uh, it doesn't really come into play, really. It was just something else to consider, just something else to throw in the bag. Now, what I saw was a fail breakout as well as two key entry points off of this guy and also off of this guy. So I entered one tick above here. Now, in hindsight, I could have just tried to enter a little bit lower, but I didn't want to miss out on this trade. So it was kind of aggressive taking a little bit higher, but it ends up being working out pretty well. And I got a very good runner out of this. I was able to trail the runner all the way up to here. So I was pretty proud of that trade. So as you can see, I got my core out and then my runner comes all the way out here about six points. So that, that green trade certainly helped wash away some of the losses. And then prices continue moving. I do see a second entry long here, new high, first entry long, second entry long. Now, the reason I didn't take this second entry long is because the signal bar here, which is this guy, is a little bearish. And when it breaks above, then you do have, you know, breaks above this bar, then you do have a confirmed second entry long. But from the earlier history of today, I played in this congestion before, and it's come back to bite me. So I decided I didn't want to take this trade, even though it closed above the EMA. So I would figure if this bar actually was kind of higher, closed even higher on this above the EMA and showed a little bit stronger bullish trend, then I would have felt more confident taking the trade. Also, this is the 200 SMA, 200 simple moving average coming into play. And I wasn't sure at the time for to act as a resistance because even though I'm in this trading range, trading channel here, I wasn't sure if it's going to reject it because it kind of rejected here. And then for the most part, it wasn't consistent, but it acted as kind of an invisible, I wouldn't say a strong resistance, but just something to consider. <coughs> All things considered, I decided to just pass on that trade which turned out to work out pretty well. I also saw a higher low. So there was a second opportunity for me to get in. Now this higher low is kind of, I should have been more cognizant because it came down, almost touched the EMA. And this was definitely worthwhile trade to take because it's confirmation of the second entry long here. Although it didn't touch and reach the EMA, it's showing a very bullish candle here. It engulfs this entire signal candle, this red candle, it engulfs it completely indicating like there's a lot of bulls coming back in. It's above the 200 simple day moving average now, just a little extra confirmation that it's worthwhile. And so I thought, okay, well, definitely would have worth, been worth taking a trade. And then I do see a new low here, first entry short, second entry short. Now this is a bullish bar. At the time I thought, okay, this is a very good signal bar. Price actually does seem to be like stalling when it hits this invisible resistance here. Well, not invisible, but seems to kind of respect a little bit of a resistance there. I thought, okay, well, again, I'm a little gun shy right now because I just had a pretty decent trade. I don't want to potentially give any profits or any uh, make my losses any bigger, but it was something was looking like that. And also it confirmed right on this next candle that this was a decent setup because it opened down here. When it opened down here, it flashes up and comes back down. There's this big gap between the close and the open, and the high came back. So I saw that. I wasn't prepared. Had I been prepared, I could have just put one tick below here, or even if I put at the same low here, would have come back and picked me up and then flushed down. So I don't see this very often, this gap, where the open actually gaps below the close, and even though it flashed up to make a new high, it comes right back down. So that was very, very interesting. Uh, just some little extra thing for me to keep in mind and watch for in the future. Prices continue shopping around. It continues moving up. And so now it finally breaks yeah, out of this trend channel that I had drawn here. So I'm just thinking it could be an overshoot or potentially could be reacting off of this guy because it's established now that this is the lower part of the trading channel. And it's either this top or this top acting and this one was a pretty decent one for a little while but as we're watching it kind of moves up and now it kind of touches here so i do see a second entry short here but you have to take it from this low zoom in you count this as a new low first entry short 
comes all the way up to second entry short. Now, it's hard to really know for me at the time because this is, I would say, kind of an aggressive entry because it's a counter trend. Even though it's a good signal bar, this could just be an overshoot, but it could also be a touch of this larger trading channel. Or it could just kind of keep going up higher because I do have this trend channel drawn. It'll be the first break. So first break, it might come back and test the new high. So I saw this, but I didn't take a trade on it. But it was just something I noticed. And it helped confirm that this larger trend channel is now in play because it broke out of this smaller trend channel that I've been using for most of the day. So it was a good signal bar. It was potentially a good trade if I was more aggressive, but I wasn't. And then it comes down, it's kind of respecting EMA, it comes back, bounces. I don't see a good trade. And now it's violating this trend channel. So, you know, this one is, it was good at the time, but now it's probably this guy, it's coming up. I'm wondering if it's gonna be an overshoot or it's gonna respect it. And as you can see, it keeps going up higher. So at this time I'm playing with another potential trend channel. So I just kind of was connecting all kinds of lines. And I finally settled on this one where it touches once, twice, potentially three times. And the only obvious point to take is the one up here. And I actually didn't trust it yet until it comes up and it's touching and riding against this guy. So definitely it's too late to try to take a long because there's no clean setup, but I would be hesitant to take a short as well because this trend is just so strong. Prices continue moving down. And so I'm watching carefully and when it touches, it bounces off here, then I thought, okay, confirm. This is a trend channel. Like these two were in play but now the dominant one, the more important one in play is this one. So that was the one I was working off of, keeping in mind that these guys are still in effect, kind of a, an entity out there to just be careful of. Prices continue moving up, draw a second trend channel, breaks through. So right here, I saw you <clears throat> a new high, first entry long, second entry long, and I saw this as a potential failure because it didn't break above the EMA, and it, well, it broke above the EMA, it didn't close above the EMA. So I put my entry right here. I got filled on this candle, but this is the counter trend, which I should have, you know, already known. This, although the signal bar was, I guess, bearish, the context isn't correct. It's, it's showing you clearly it's a very bullish day. So to take a short is, is dumb, even though it's coming under the EMA. I needed more price action, more confirmation. Lo and behold, it stops me out. It stops me out because I have my entry here. I wanted to be very conservative, keep it tight, it comes down, it comes back up and takes me out. So then I see another one here, which is already, you know, new low, first entry short, second entry short. I'm thinking uh, I, I have to be, I can't be wrong again. Well, clearly I am. Because when I took a short here and I got stopped out here, I tried again here. I took a short and as you can see, I got stopped out again. Now, there was no reason for me to take these trades because the context and the setups weren't very clean. It's also very congested. You can see the EMA is cutting through the middle of these. There's a trading range being developed. And in hindsight, of course, hindsight's always 2020. These were kind of foolish trades to have taken. So these are two more additional trades I got read on. And prices continue moving up, it comes back down. Okay, so now I see, I'm kind of at least on the right side of my thinking now. I see a new high, first entry long here, which is very tiny, second entry long. So here, it's just, just uh, this is not the cleanest setup, but what I notice is it's in this trading range. It kind of went down to the bottom of this trading range and bounced back up. And this is the trend channel from the, the earlier today. It's kind of dominating the big one, right? And although it's breaking out, I had the idea and the impression that, okay, Potentially, there's another trade channel coming up here. This one here to this one down here. Let me just uh, actually draw it in so it looks a little cleaner. I'm thinking it could be actually be something like this with something up at the top. But at the time, I said, okay, well, at least I think I see a two key entry point. The bottom of this trading range as well as the top outside of this trend channel, which originally was containing price action, but now it looks like it's supporting it on the outside because although it broke in, it came back out, touched again, went back out. This one here touched and it potentially is going back out. So that gave me enough confidence that this second entry long potentially could be valid. It's going with trend, it could still be a few, still some legs in this price action. So I went ahead and took an entry here 
3975, which is right here. 3975, one tick above. And I know the EMA is coming in, but the EMA isn't as important right now because it's just horizontal. I take a trade, and this actually turns out to be quite a good trade because I take the runner for almost 18 points. So uh, just want to make a couple of notes about this. It's bouncing off the trend line, broke through. I take my core off just for one clean point, just to feel good, just to know I got a profitable trade. I move my runner to break even, which is right here. And I decided to just manage to trade which is something I've always had trouble with because I just kept the runner here and I deliberately waited because typically when the price action moves up, I keep the runner one tick behind the previous bar. Had I done that, I would have been stopped out right here at 39.81 roughly. And I would have gotten about six, six points out of this, which is not bad. But I wanted to manage to trade differently. I said, I'm actually going to move it to the low of the swing. So when it comes back, I saw this trend channel forming. I knew it was going to break out eventually. It did. I figure it's going to test this new high. So my stop is still down here. Still down here with this gray crosshairs is comes back down. I'm giving away profits. I'm watching my six point profit evaporate. Comes down, double bottoms. I'm trusting that EMA is going to hold because EMA has been showing a lot of strength this morning and today. Even though it's bouncing up and down, price action is just so strong. It's clearly a bullish day. It keeps moving up now. So then I move my stop from down here to right here and so the price action keeps moving now if i kept my runner one tick below i might have gotten stopped down here but i didn't i just waited saw this consolidation and continuation move up that's when i dragged my stop up to here and then i also draw this trend channel because i see something developing whenever you i've been learned and taught that whenever you see these small little candles moving in a very organized fashion in a direction it's a pretty strong trend so I kind of have my stop here. It's already my six points that originally would have gotten out of my, done my original strategy. And I watched it continue moving up. And so far it's respecting. And right about here, it's kind of hitting this 3990. It's pretty far from the EMA. I got a little wigged out. So that's when I decided to change my strategy up. And I go out of the 3990 from my 3975. I'm already pretty clean 10 points up from my from my original entry when I was at, excuse me, yeah, 39.90, right about here. I drag, now the tiers where I started my one tick below, because I wanted to at least walk away with 10 clean points. So I ended up dragging, dragging, I kept it about two, two ticks below, and then I was hoping for another bigger move. So I had got stopped out at 39.92, where the high was actually at 39.95. So I left three points on the table, the way I managed to trade, I'm actually happy with. Not necessarily the trade itself. The trade was a, pretty decent because I had two key entry points, but the way I managed to run her, I, I really liked because usually I'd be too afraid to try to get back any profits, especially on a day like today where I've given so much profit. I pretty much in the red, but this one runner helped clean out a lot of that loss. So I was able to take it all the way up and it was just kind of a change in strategy because usually I just keep it one tick below. Had I kept it one tick below, there's always sometimes a candle that breaks one tick below the previous and always takes you out, then reverses all the way back up. You could say you want to maybe take it two candles, but depending on your risk tolerance, where your mental state is, you know, even two ticks would have just taken you out. It, but had you just kept it right where your entry was, you could wait for a bigger move. Now you have to think about it in context because it might not always happen, but today it happened for me and I was kind of proud of the way I handled the runner, not necessarily how I traded today, but at least on this one specific trade. So that's how I saw it today. Hopefully that was helpful. Quite a few things I learned today about myself as well as the trading with the gap down, like seeing those big, uh, seeing big gaps in uh, the, like this one right here, seeing these big uh, open and closed gaps. It's just a little something to put in my memory to see and keep in mind of, as well as how to manage my runners. So hopefully that was helpful.